welcome everyone to a special Solon edition of Thunder Metal Reviews. To, before we kick things off, I have two quotes for you. First, you don't understand me. You are not expected to. You are not capable of it. I am beyond your experience. That is a quote by Richard Ramirez, who was the topic of one of the songs we're going to be talking about tonight. The second quote is by the band that did the song about Richard Ramirez, Skinned. I want to get as close as possible to the evils that humans are capable of. I am obsessed with it. For weeks, months even, I've been trying to get into the heads of the most vicious, cruel killers. There's nothing more fascinating to me than people who have reached the boundary of their humanity. And with that, I am the Reverend Ben Lindsay. With me, as always, are Tracy, the spreadsheet Newport, the Dr. David Pizzo, and a featured guest who is now a full-time member, Gabe Cooper. My friends, how are you doing on this special, not exactly metal, episode of Thunderdome it's, Metal Reviews? It's metal, metal adjacent. And if Guar was Tracy's fault, this is my fault, but also your fault. Ben, because I did not know <laughs> this band until you're like, oh, you like fucked up shit. You like this. And it was off to the race. It is about a year ago. It was, was about a year ago. At Tracy's house. So also yeah. Tracy's fault. The only one that's blameless here is Gabe. I was going to ask whose fault it was, but I was pretty sure who who whose it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 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 that's okay. So before we started recording, Tracy was saying something about not being that fucked up. <laughs> so what I was talking about is I can speak for myself. I kind of want to throw Gabe in here, but I don't know him well enough. But maybe he is like this. But the material that these songs covers is maybe I'm normal or not fucked up enough or not normal enough. Cause I know a lot of normal people who are also like Ben, who really love this shit, who love digging deep into the serial killer mindset and like the criminal minds and stuff. And I'm like, man, life is already shit enough to live in. I want to be happy while I live it and do things that are fun and happy. <laughs> and Ben's like, this is my playground. We're going to have some fun. I wouldn't consider this my playground necessarily. I mean, you know, the, the, the reason that Gabe could guess that this was probably my fault is I actually do have a section on my bookshelf devoted to serial killers. But part of that is because I'm also, in addition to being a historian, a criminologist. So, I mean, if you're going to study violent crime, this is the sexy topic and that's what people are into. And to Tracy's point, true crime is one of the most um, profitable and popular genres of podcast uh, of TV show out there. You know, for as much as we might talk about boutique TV, such as The Wire, which itself is a crime drama, although it's using that as a trope to tell a, a much more in-depth story, there are thousands of CSI or NCIS or Law and & Order and all these other things. So I think that the, the darkness of humanity is something that a lot of people do enjoy delving into for cathartic reasons. Um, I would even go so far as to say that I think a lot of females really get into it because they are often the victims of this. So in studying as much of it as they can, and there is a sense of taking the power back in that. But, I mean, this is also a way to touch on the evil and the horrors and atrocities of things like genocide, but on a much more on a scale that it's more easy to wrap your head around, I think. So it's kind of interesting, Ben, because we're talking about sort of the thematic aspect of this music that we're looking at, which we don't know too much about yet. But mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that this thematic thing is definitely what draws people in or is what has drawn a couple of us in. Um, whereas like, I don't know, none of us are sort of practicing Satanists and we don't look for, you know, uh, you know, uh, sat satanist uh, metal bands to listen you know what i mean like right. it's sort of like one of those maybe things. not you <laughs> that's right maybe i'm, maybe I'm speaking speak out for of yourself <laughs> but no i do think so i mean uh, part of it to this is the pageantry and to the band skins credit which we don't know a whole lot about so i mean this is not an album where they've released essentially two eps and then a couple of singles that we're going to be talking about um, this was, for the record, I introduced David to this, but this was David's idea. 
Um, You're welcome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is Skin, the singer, who is very theatrical in the use of makeups and costumes in a um, not quite guar way, but more in a some cross between, I hate to say it, but like, because it's not even as over the top and weird as Insane Clown Posse, but it is in a way that is meant to evoke a psychological reaction, uh, but also very odd, like um, the Antwood kind of way, I would say, because it I reminds me of that um, too. And then the instrumentalist who's just known as F. So really, this is just kind of a um, dark wave duo out here releasing songs. Yes, F for father. Yes, yes. <laughs> father. Father. And uh, yeah, I I think Marina Ortega's voice at times does sound a lot like Dion Ford. I think that you can make that argument. I've not listened to her earlier work. She was in like normal bands before this, <laughs> before she was doing this. And yeah, Ben was just like, oh, you like some weird shit here. And played, I think that the first one was Jim Jones, right? I think it was. It was. Because you went on a spiel about Jim Jones while listening to it. Like yes. while we're sitting there in the kitchen. And so then I was like, huh, this is a thing. And then I will admit, I got too into it and did a deep dive, not only on this stuff, you know, there's like case files, their website. It's just, it's intense. Uh, then I was like, huh, Viner had a bunch of serial killers. And then I went down that path and that was a mistake. Um, so this, this music took me to a dark place, but I got out of it again. And I think their music is amazing. And it is, in my opinion, as metal as some of the other stuff we've done. Oh, sure. I'm not, you know, saying it's not metal. If, if nothing else in subject matter, it is. Because how many times have we been talking about a metal band and they have like some, maybe not a, a song that is directly attributable about a real world serial killer, although the slayers of the world often yeah, slayer. do. Um, but thematically touch on this. So I think it's very um, on brand for us as a podcast to talk about. I think so too. And Halloween is scary and this shit is scary. Like these songs, the videos, the presentation, the, the menacing sound that they achieve in some of these songs is, in my opinion, some of the scariest shit I've ever heard. More than I think a lot of supposedly extreme music that I think just crosses almost into comical looking at you black metal a little bit and death uh -huh. metal too for that matter yes i admit it as much i love death metal yes there's no whimsy present here no that is that is not what they're about um the fact that as a, a swiss duo um that every single one of their cases is or I guess they're based on Australia. So I guess she's Swiss. I don't know about father. I have no idea. But anyway, that these Swiss Australians, every case but one is the fucking United States is devastating. And I know, of course, there are others. And they found another, you know, Catherine. Um, I'm drawing Blake on this last name. Yeah, Catherine Knight was Australian. So close to home for, I assume father is Australian. Anyway, um... You know, it's just a devastating indictment of what we are to the world. And we've done that to ourselves through things like CSI and being who we are in real reality as well. But um, it's sort of interesting how much of this is about the, either about Americans or in America. Because, you know, yeah. one's a Canadian in America, one's Americans in Guyana, but it's like America's seven out of eight of these. Yeah. Well, let's talk about them in some form of order. So the, on the first... Um, EP, well, go, oh, go ahead, Tracy. Well, I guess I've ever talked about them. I guess yeah, one in particular, because I feel like, well, I think two of these stick out as being different from the other ones. And I guess I'll let you tell what they're about before we get into that. Okay, well, the, the first EP was Chapter One, which is got three tracks, Richard Ramirez, Gary Heinick, and Elise Lamb. And Elise Lam is actually um, not about a, a killer. It is about a student who was Canadian, but um, I don't remember what country she was originally from. Because she was her parents immigrated. They were, they were Chinese, Chinese Canadian. Chinese Canadian. Yeah, from Hong Kong. Yeah. And she disappeared in a hotel 
Um, they had footage of her coming in and out of an elevator, hiding in an elevator. And then they, this was in California. The residents of the hotel started complaining about something weird with the water pressure. They investigate there are two big water tanks up on the roof. Her body was found floating in one of the tanks with her clothing and belongings floating next to her. Except for her cell phone. Except for her cell phone, yes. It's, it's, the, it's the Cecil Hotel, which is the same one yes. as the Black Dahlia murder. Yeah. Fucking LA. Um, I don't know. There's some weird shit about that case, though. And I know that's not what this podcast is about. Like, like, how did she get in there and get the door, the hatch closed? And there's some... Well, the, not, the hatch was open. The hatch so let, me, let me just air open. this one concern that I have with this, this collection of records, which yes, is please. like, you know... This artist has taken the time to put together these case files where the people who are listening to the music can go back and find out what the case was about that they are uh, using as a basis for their creative efforts. If you don't actually know the case files, or if you've never heard of them, or if you don't take the time to look them up, this is really just strange music and it's not evo evocative of much in particular. So for me, that's, that is a problem <laughs> as like an artistic kind of thing like it should be standalone i think we were talking about this a lot with guar too if the album doesn't you know function without the stage show does it really work you know is it really uh you know a quality sort of artistic production you're i i get that and i think the live stage show was part of this also I, and i guess i'm probably the only one who's done this i've watched a bunch of their live performances and holy shit like i think in many ways that was the thinking in terms of how to present this uh, where there's also a bassist live, so it's father on playing drums live. That's all live drumming. And then a bassist and her, and she is so fucking good live. She's so good. Mm -hmm. Like her range and just, in some ways, I think better than on the albums, actually. Probably so. Yeah, and that, so, but that does not mean it's not a problem. Gabe is right to bring that up. We have mm -hmm. talked about it with Guar. And, you know, as per usual, just like with Guar, where I've actually seen the stage shows or here where I've, like, read the files and watched a bunch of performances like oh, i'm not the one who can answer that <laughs> like i i drank the flavor aid yeah like, I, I go ahead Tristan. i was gonna say like coming into this not knowing anything really about most of these i guess not look listen to these before doing any research on them like i think there's three songs that kind of really I think are part of everyday parlance and just common knowledge. I think they can be able to accept. And I think it's one on each of the EPs and the one of the singles. And, but I think the rest, like I had to look up the rest of them, like, who's this about? Who's this about? And then when you see it, it's like, Oh, that's who that's about. I think that to Gabe's point, some of these tracks, I don't know work outside of either the live performance which i haven't seen or the videos which are right. quite striking and evocative they are actually they're a higher level of art than the songs are in my opinion mm -hmm. just because of the costuming and everything else um but i do think some of the tracks do work as standalone songs but i also think that this is fairly niche targeted because of the fact that they're using people's names as the title track, if you are in this oeuvre, if you are into true crime, you're going to know who all these people are. There are some right. of them I didn't know who were, and I don't consider myself like a true, true crime person, like I said, but as a criminologist, I, I'm familiar with some of these cases. And like Elise Lamb, I had to remind myself who that was and look that up. But I have seen so many videos or podcasts about her and the tragic story. And... To me, that is something we're talking about as well, is, is this cashing in on tragedy? Sure. <clears throat> I mean, I, I had that thought too. I think what sort of bothered me more was that, you know, there is music out there that is really actually unsettling, but mm -hmm. just because it's the music is unsettling and it doesn't have to sort of work with that, um, that narrative to prop it up. Um, you, if you guys have ever heard of FKA Twigs, um, I think that is some deeply unsettling electronic music, but it has nothing whatsoever to do with serial killers. So maybe it does, but um, it doesn't wear that uh, influence on its sleeve. Um, movie soundtracks are much creepier than this is, you know, generally, generally speaking. Um, but I think Ben, you're right in saying that 
it is targeted to a specific market. It is. Um, so if you're into that stuff already, you're probably going to like this. And I think they also view themselves very much as video artists. I think that's I very too. clear mm-hmm. by the consistency with which they do them. Every single one has a video. Like there's no, um, in some ways, this is a soundtrack to those videos, actually. Yeah, really. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know this, but just my sense of things, they had to have spent so much more on cinematography than they did on audio production. A lot mm-hmm. more. And that's actually how I ran across this band was honestly, I, one of my female friends is super into serial killer culture and true crime. And she's like, hey, you should check this out. And that's how I got the bug. So where. And the, I'll admit, I chickened out and I got through three of the videos before I uh, watched the right before I get yep, I'm done and watching the rest of them. Uh, <laughs> Well, well, I didn't give it up and watch them all at the same time. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> I was attempted was to do dumb. that. And got, I was attempted to do that. Got through three and it's like, all right, I'm done. Just uh, I didn't get to the third one. I was like, yep, I'm tapping out here. But yeah, they spent. They're they're very much a, a video artist in the sense of even like their yes. YouTube plays are triple to quadruple the amount of plays they have as opposed to like their Spotify yes. plays. Yes. Well, that's, the videos are well made. Well, yeah. and I think that also goes to Gabe's point that that some of them, as just songs, aren't that catchy. Or if you didn't know what they were about, why am I listening to this? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I would push back and say some of them do. Like, uh, if, but we're talking about the first one, so I think the Gary Hydnick one is a very good song. I was gonna say, let's just discuss them as a whole. All both EPs and the two singles, because, I mean, it's kind of hard to really break these down when you're talking about themes and when you're limiting yourself just to one EP. I don't think so, but we'll do it that well, way. And, and then also, like, because you But know, I know more about it than you do, too. So, I yeah, mean, that, yeah. as far as the actual case files. Yes, and, like, you were also talking about like, unsettling. It's like, I think probably one of the more unsettling ones is off the second one, and it's also one of the lesser-known cases, at least in my opinion. Sure. Let me run down what is on the second EP. Um, Catherine Knight, Tyler Hadley, and Jim Jones. And then Mm. Tom Bine and Michelle Carter. Are the, yeah, two singles. And for me, like, the Tyler Hadley one is creepy as fuck, and so is the Catherine Knight. Like, just hearing them. Like, just hearing them, and you're like, what the hell? I think two is better than one. I think too scarier. Even I if one is the one that I actually like did a little bit of looking into. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. So I crazy. I think two takes a lot of what works off of one and really doubles down on it Great. in that they use a lot of quotes from the actual people yes. to craft the songs. And I think Catherine Knight is not only just a creepy story, but um, a really well written song. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think it's the best one. Me too. I think it's the best one. It is. And the best one that enters a standalone song, even if you don't know the case. Yeah, I, I'll agree with that. And I think even to add the creepiness to it is how they draw the octave in, this, in the female singing out, I, was always, I will always love you. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it gives you the hippie jeebies. The. You know, and voice manipulation is not new in songs. Not but the all. degree to which they do this here such that she replaces a male vocalist is amazing. Right? Because that's essentially what they've done here is she's filling all of those roles and it's just her. I agree with that. And to your point, that what you can do with uh, the technology to where she does kind of sound like sound like the girl from DeAnt Wood um it's kind of amazing but there are moments where she sings clean and she has such a gorgeous and powerful voice she does that it really is stunning when she comes out of like um whatever pitch shifter they're using to to lower and raise her voice yes it makes that's i think why Catherine knight it slaps so hard you're like oh my god i think the other one where you can't hear that is in richard ramirez which isn't my favorite song it's one of my least favorite ones it's not a bad song it just kind of lumbers along to me doesn't quite go anywhere but uh the, her vocal performance in that song is stunning mm-hmm. 
and again, the live shows, they're all on YouTube. Holy shit. I would love to see this band live. I think it happen anytime soon, but not unless you get over to Europe in the spring. Because they are touring Europe in the spring. They would be. Sounds like something. I think the other do. thing that's uh yeah. interesting is that um in Tyler Hadley and Lisa Lamb, um, there are these nonsense syllables that mm-hmm. they bring in for I mean, they're sort of part of normal songwriting but i don't think it adds anything to the mood that they're trying to create with these songs i think it makes it kind of like i don't know silly or i don't know i think um, it works in columbine i think it just makes columbine silly like it really? just oh, I yeah, I, yeah think, I, I think it makes it i think it makes it silly i mean it's like um the everything else about it is just like super obviously creepy and then, you know, having these nonsense syllables in there is just like, okay, it makes uh, it, it makes it, I think it, I think it makes it harmless. And I would say that is dangerous. You shouldn't make it harmless. Um, and you shouldn't make it silly, especially if you're trying to be creepy, but also it's just like, you know, I don't think it's appropriate. I will disagree with you only because I've heard enough 911 calls to hear people actually bring nonsense syllables or vocalizations when they're going through high stress. So, and that's what it reminded me of. And maybe that's just a different context. Um, so, but to me, that adds in a weird way to the authenticity of somebody in one of these situations. Which is problematic in its own right. For sure. The song's fucking terrifying. And the Sabre guest performance is quite good. Mm-hmm. Bill Sabre, I think is his name. Yeah. Their guest performances are good because we when are. they had Jonathan Davis Indeed. on the, the, the first one, it was real good. I don't think they have any label support at all. I don't think they have a label. No, none of this has been released on a <laughs> no. label. It, it's, it hasn't even been released in a physical format. It's all flat files. Indeed. Well, they're very 21st century. They right? are. A low overhead. Why? It's Other than what they're spending on the... Uh, the video production and you know to kind of back up to the previous conversation i agree with gabe that this should not be made silly that that is very dangerous i just that's not how i interpret the vocalizations yeah that's Me fair either, but i but i take that point yeah. um Eric, go ahead, Tracy. To, we can bring up a, a comparison because i've seen this is they're the second band i've seen there's maybe others that do it and, you know, these said their cold, cold case files are online. And that kind of reminded me of when we did Sabaton back up over a year sure. ago and how they did all like have all that research that they did and like primary resources they found on like World War One when they released the Warren album. And they're like, hey, guys, look at this. And this is where we got the basis for the songs from, you know, kind of extent there, which I think is kind of interesting about artists incorporating these extra abilities to bring them in. And kind of creating a beyond just music, but a much more artistic experience. I think yeah. that's cool. I, I definitely think that's cool, cool, Jason. I think it, the bands are right to do it. You know, um, I guess my my question is like, is it in this case, is it a crutch? You know, can the music stand on its own? Um, and I would also, when you said Sabaton, of course, I thought of 1914. And, Same. Um, you know, those, some of those guys probably have archives full of just like, you know, memorabilia and just Indeed. random stuff that they look at to, you know, to be inspired by and to kind of, uh, you know, compose based on. And I don't think that that music needs anything like that because the music is just powerful in its own way and it's interesting enough in its own way and it's terrifying in its own way. Um, so that's why I brought it up. I want to say that in terms of creepiness, well, I think Catherine Knight is a better song. I think the second best song and the most terrifying one absolutely is Jim Jones. Holy shit. And that video, did you watch that video, Tracy? No, I, I saw oh. it. <laughs> yeah. You have to watch it. It's one of the best videos. Agreed. I, I watched it. I, I was watching the order of how Spotify hide them. And then, so I got Lisa, Liam, Gary, Heidnick, and Richard Ramirez. And the, Richard Ramirez is the one I was like, nope. I'm done. <laughs> no, I get that. But the, the 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 Jim Jones one is one of the most abstract, as is Tyler Hadley. I think my yeah. favorite ones are precisely the ones. The Tyler Hadley video is amazing. Uh, but also is, is um, 
evocative rather than maybe literal and i guess none of them are literal Mm -hmm. but well i mean elisa lamb was kind of literal that video yeah it was probably the most a little bit uh yeah yeah probably the the most literal of the the bunch is that one Mm. um it's it's funny because i think jim jones is a good one but i don't think it's one of the better ones probably because i think that Concrete Blonde did better with the subject matter with their song Jonestown, but your your point about it being abstract as a, a piece of abstract art, that video is phenomenal. I think that it being abstract is also, um, it's a real credit to them as, uh, you know, people who are in try- trying to interpret this event, but also, um, you know, with the knowledge that people are going to be impacted by what they see there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they can't just do it any old way or be super literal about it. And I think what they, what they did really works. I do too. And I have to admit to at least the three of you, and I guess all our listeners, this has slapped real different in the last two years than it would have earlier in terms of a death cult. Holy shit. And I'm not, Positive equivalence, but this dive into the literal suicide fury of a cult as I live through what all of us are living through, uh, I think disturbed me in a way it would not have prior to the last three years. That's fair. Mm-hmm. And that's not what they were writing about at all. That's the thing. That's why I think it does work as music because ultimately this song isn't about that but it might as well be. Uh, and, you know, to some introspective, like, I think the Jim Jones song works great as a song by itself, even. I don't think it's I do too. video dependent. I agree with that as well. So I don't know, uh, other than, like, really deconstructing the songs, if there's a whole lot more that we can say about this, man. We didn't talk about Michelle Carter, because holy fuck. Well, sure. That is so creepy. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god, now that's the most so recent creepy. one. And that's I'd like, like, yeah, go ahead, Tracy. I was just saying, like, that's like the capstone of like, fuck yes. up. I feel like almost. Yes. And I, I liked it. I was a little disappointed. I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't quite as good as what's on too. But the more I listen to it and that video, that video, anyway. Um, and you know that case is quite famous in terms of recent cases and was like precedent setting. And I have mixed feelings about it as a case. And we don't maybe have to get into that. The How do we assign culpability in the era of the internet, essentially? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's an interesting choice. It isn't what I expected. Because there was a rumor they were going to do Mary Bell, that serial killer in Britain who killed children. Uh, and then I was waiting for, wait, are we going to get some Dahmer? Are we, you know, because there's a lot. Wayne Gacy, John Wayne Gacy. But... This was an interesting choice and very much, I think, having seen interviews with her and father, how they feel about modernity. They are very uh, Euro trash, Australian skeptical about all of this. And I share that with them. I mean, they're, I don't think they glorify and revel in any of this. I think they think society as a whole is like war. They have this in common absolutely hypocritical and sick and imploding and involuting and murderous oh well and we still might because the the pattern up until now has been three tracks per chapter indeed and uh, if you go to their website which is where i got the the quote from the band from uh, um it says that and it might just be something to do with the concert but it says something is coming in february of 2022 so yes. I don't know if that's going to be a chapter four or the, the final track for the triptych of chapter three. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Knowing them, it'll probably be the pattern has been the singles get looped in. So it'll probably be yeah. Michelle Carter and Columbine, dear God. And who the fuck knows what else? They have plenty of material they could use. They do. That is the problem with us as people. And Ben, I'm with you. The thing that drew me to serial killers was precisely, and I don't want to overstate this, because society doesn't scale this way, but the atrocities that I study normally at the macro level scale down tremendously and with a very different accountability structure. But right. uh, but um, no, I, I think you and I were the target audience for this band. And 100%. I will cop to that. Yeah, same. So 
So maybe I'm too into it, and I'm sorry, but also not sorry. So I guess now, Ben, I just wanted to throw out Michelle Carter because holy fuck, as the ending, like, like it's the most recent performance. Um, yeah, I guess maybe should we should we just like grade all of it? I don't even know what we're doing. Uh, yeah, here. I think we should. If we're going to grade it, we should give all of it a grade, and we maybe we don't like give it a grade. I mean, yeah, or don't. We can also not. I'm okay with that too. I was actually. kind of leaning towards us not because I mean, how we do you not? technically grade this since it's hey. the way it's submitted the experience that's needed required because yeah. this isn't like something like you could typically sit down like hey check this out list and i'm like sure i guess if you want the full skinned effect you need to sit down and like watch the videos not yeah. do it over and not in one go <laughs> don't do it I mean, one you go. can i mean it's possible it's just your I'm, you, you shouldn't <laughs> i'm living proof that you can yeah, you game. can and that you shouldn't <laughs> and that you yeah. should yes <laughs> like bite-sized I'm really not great at it. It's like pass fail. Or yeah. what is it? What was that thing you were talking about, Gabe? Like A, B, C, pretend it didn't no happen. No entry. No entry. Um, I, Did yeah, they achieve I, what they wanted to achieve? I think they absolutely did. Oh, 100%. I would, and I recommend yeah. this to anyone who's even peripherally into this shit. And that's everyone who likes Slayer, by the way. Mm. <laughs> right? Well, or uh, Ice Nine Kills, which it, you know, sings about horror shit all the time. Uh, it, 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 if you are in this this weird spot of a venn diagram as a metalhead or just and if you're not a metalhead why are you listening to this podcast but i digress um but if you're if you're into true crime because this is a a they have done the research i cannot fault them for that at all um these are really interesting and i don't want to overstate this because i don't know anything about these people um but not only have they done their research, but they have constructed maybe not the songs themselves, but the videos in such a way, like I said, to have a psychological effect. It's not gore for gore's sake. They could have done something like that. Uh, if if it was Yo 20, you know, a metal band from 1992 doing some of these songs, they probably would have. They would have. Um, cause because even Jeremy, which talks about school shootings, yes. does so in a more literal way. Although Very. Columbine is, is also kind of literal, to be honest. Um, but anyhow, I, I think that these are incredibly, if you are if you are in the demographic who's into dark and twisted shit, uh, into true crime, into metal, even though this is not metal, into dark wave or new wave, electronic music writ large, you should really check this out because I think that there, that as an art, taking something that is as dark and... Um, depressing as the subject matter and doing what they did with it is impressive yeah morbid angel sent actual toxic slime to its fans ben so yes <laughs> or bands from that era would have taken it too far yeah 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 for real. yeah i just i can't recommend this highly enough unless you are not into this and then don't listen to it dear god but anyway if you're willing to sit through these videos and in increments they just do so much right. Like the brass, we didn't get into too many specifics, but the brass on Catherine Knight, that is how you do it. Every time I bitch about black metal not using low end brass properly, that is what I mean. That song is how you do it. Um, and they don't use guitar often, but when they do, goddamn, like it is, they use it very effectively. The songs are very well put together. And I would advise, you know, Gabe is right. Maybe they don't stand on their own. So don't, don't consume them that way. Maybe you should uh, go and just watch them. But I'm going to, since I can't grade it, I will simply just recommend it highly to anyone who is as messed up as I am or Ben. And, uh, you know, and I just, the historian in me, and I know maybe it's exploitative, but man, I love the use of primary sources. Right? Like, the, that's not a thing I get in most songs. And so I'm like, fucking yes. And it makes it so much worse. Because I'm, I'm like, she surely, she, surely Michelle Carter didn't say that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> she a hundred percent did. She did. Or the Jim Jones recording. That's what yes. that is. That's yes. that fucking awful. And I don't know if you've ever listened to it, Gabe, because I have. I have that, too. Oh my God. That tape that was playing as they were making yep. everyone drink that shit. That was new to me and very terrifying. I haven't heard that tape. It is you don't not, want to, Tracy. If you don't want to, Tracy. It is literally the voice of the devil. If and I don't really believe in that per se, but oh my God. And that is what is that is what you are hearing in the song. Yeah. Children hurry. Yeah, it's all over. That's it. That's what he says over and over. Mm -hmm. And you can tell he's high as fuck and losing. That was the brilliant part about it is the fact that, yes. it's, that in the recording, in the song that they make, it is just so sparse vocally because it is that. And it's that. 
And that's how it sounds. It's disconnected and frantic. And, and it's this. It's like what he was saying about 911 calls. Like that's, right. it sounds like the, the Columbine 911 calls, which are like almost, anyway, it's all a lot. Anyway, they did their homework and they incorporated it and they used primary sources. And so the historian in me gives them a high grade that I will not specify. I think if somebody is not super into this um, or doesn't foresee sure. themselves being in super into it, I would say do do either listen to or see Catherine Knight because that is I really agree with that. Agreed. And um, and also, I mean, I think that I think the videos do a whole lot for the songs. Me too. Um, I do too. So if you want to call it the the Gesamt Kunstwerk uh, effect, that's it. That's <laughs> of the the serial killer uh electronic music venn diagram um this is this is where you're gonna find that shine weiter that's, that's it <laughs> <laughs> uh well i love that we don't have to grade it no one has to commit anything i see tracy's guy has like a thousand yard stare poor tracy i feel like this i feel like <laughs> trace gabe was numbed by the waters of berlin or whatever i don't know but i feel i feel tracy wasn't quite ready for i this. give it four bloody daggers four bloody daggers <laughs> and, yet, and, yet, and yet i want to point out tracy wades through the most death of all of us for real the most knives as well <laughs> Maybe that's maybe it's too close. I, th I, th I, th I think it's the uh, guys. He likes to leave that at the office. All right, <laughs> work-life balance. You got to respect yeah. that. You got to respect that. Uh, you do. I get it. This work-life balance does not imply that he should be listening to Skint when he gets home. Yes, it's like the cattle decapitation. It's just too real. And I am going to make us listen to some of that next year. By the way, it's Ooh. overdue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm probably going to start with the one about the slaughterhouse. Anyway, the point is, I am grateful to myself for making us listen to this and i am <laughs> just as i was grateful to tracy for making guar happen a half accidentally uh -huh. and ben thank you for introducing this and curse us all dear god why is it like this exactly yes and if you are listening to this or watching this thank you for supporting the the podcast the youtube channel and uh I hope you like this uh, poisoned apple that we gave for you this Halloween. Indeed. I think you're ready to describe a poisoned apple. Just like, you go it is drink totally it, a poisoned drink apple. Drink it down. Full of razor blades, just like the old the <laughs> urban legend. Exactly. All right. We'll catch you next time.